G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today the video is going to be about the Nightwalker 3 from Valhalla military style sleeping bag. Now I brought my cheat sheet again so I can tell you what they say about it and then I'll get it out the uh, compression sack and we'll show you what it is. Okay, got the cheat sheet. We'll go down the list first. It says outer top shell is made from a 210T ripstop nylon with a Teflon finish. Outer bottom shell made with the two, uh, 210D nylon Oxford with a PU 2000mm waterproof finish. Inner shell made from 210T ripstop nylon. It's an 80 gram or 80 gm per square meter DuPont Thermalite micro insulation. Uh, insulation incorporates an ultra thin barrier of antibacterial pure silver microfiber which also increases its heat retaining capability. Uh, insulation is flat filled to prevent cold spots. Uh, internal baffle foot is reinforced with 210D nylon oxford with a PU 2000mm waterproof finish to limit damage from boots, internal and external hanging tabs, bonded seams, Central double puller, heavy duty number 8 spole zip with storm flap, anti snag zip with Valco tab closure, draw cord and barrel lock in hood, shaped hood for extra comfort, internal PDA pocket, 210D nylon Oxford spider compression sack, designed for operations in minus 5 degrees Celsius locations, and that's the te uh, temperature rating of the minus 5 is in extreme locations. Uh, DIMS unpacked dimensions I think it's supposed to mean. Unpacked 210 and 85 at the shoulder or 210 centimeters in length, 85 centimeters across the shoulders and 55 centimeters at the foot end. And the packed dimensions is 21 centimeters by 20 centimeters and it weighs in at 1.35 kilograms. So specs are all done, we can actually go on to actually looking at the pack, or the uh, sleeping bag itself. First of all, compression sack. Good. Good stitching. Good design. If you want to carry it on its own, you've got the cord to throw it over your shoulder there. Or you can actually throw that over your pack. And you can carry it that way grab handle at the bottom which is very handy for when you're pulling the sleeping bag out some good quality buckles on it the webbing hasn't been finished off brilliant we've still got the frayed end here and then they stitched it or well, once they doubled it over but I think that'll take a while and a bit of uh, knocking about to ruin that excuse the flame going over Before I take it, let's see how far we can compress it down. Gone down a bit, not much really. It's probably gone down to about two thirds of the length, but it's still going to save space. The compression sack not bulging out any bigger than the actual original circumference, so that's that's good. The grab handle. It's going to be a bugger to get hold of if it's compressed, if you're thinking of putting a carabiner and then hanging up from your pack like this. Or just carrying it in your hand. So that's going to be, is tight. So let's, let's open this up now.
Now it's not just a flat lid on this, it actually comes down by a good, what's that, two, two and a half inches. So everything is protected inside the bag. And here's that cord that I showed you, which could go over the shoulders. Leave your line lock on it. Now on this one, we don't have a storm flap to go over there before we put this on. So it's only this protecting the, on the inside. So the first thing, by the looks of it, I'll put it in head end first, is one of the hanging points for when you're storing it. Is that? Oh no, this is the head end, that's right. You're able to peg it down if you wish. Never have, never wanted to. But there's one on either side, is there? No, only one on the one side. So it all the way up the bag now. There's the two at the toe point to hang. And again, they've got a third one on the same side as the one at the top. All right, let's find it again. Yep, there it is. We've got one at each end, one well, the same side. We've got one at the bottom of the foot, so you could peg that one down if you wanted to. Yep. Yeah, I don't see why you would want to unless you're on the slope. Construction wise with this, the stitching, to be honest, is not the best. It's um, uneven stitching, should I say, is the easiest way to say it. It's, uh, yeah. If I was to go in the shop and pick it up and see that, I, I wouldn't personally buy it myself. You may, that may not bother you. Because it hasn't come apart in the last, how long have I had it? About 12 months now or more? I've used it, I tried it in the hammock and I've tried it in different situations, but we'll go through that as we go. You can see the, it's a good hood. You don't have to cinch it up and it's already over the head. So that'll be coming around if you've got your head all the way up in there. And we've got the cinch cord on that side and we've got one on this side. So if we give it a tug and all these down, that goes very small. So you could probably end up sticking your nose out there. That's it. But that moves very easy. Some of these sort of things, you've got the draw cord going through and they snag as you're trying to pull them out. There's just not enough room or the cord's too small. But it is good on this one. Now like on the hiking sleeping bags, you get the pillow insert. You do not have one on this. So that's not a problem. That's nothing here or there. or That doesn't bother me. We have the main zip coming down the middle. And that goes about, what's that, about three quarters of the way down. And then you've got your foot box. We've got the Velcro closure. And this opens nice and easy. So if you wanted to get out in a hurry, nothing preventing you. And zips up all the way. Gently touch them and the Velcro is stuck again. So the zipper on it is Pretty good, pretty good. It's probably not the best, but it's held. It's way, way, way away from being the worst one. It's got a dust cover on it. So the actual zips on the inside, the spirals. So that's gonna stop, help stop dirt or any moisture getting in there. It won't stop it 100% because it's not waterproof, but it will reduce it by something like 99.9% .9 or more. The pulley, just the right size. Some people might prefer that longer. And you'll just swap it, so be a uh, power cord in there to whatever length you want, and you'll be okay. So that's the outside. That's so we've got these heavier duty Oxford on the bottom, waterproof. So 
So it's, when I've used this, I'll tell you, so no water has gone in it, uh, in the bivy, no water, no uh, condensation. Uh, out under the tarp, when it rained, it got wet, I gave it a shake off. It was good. There was no wet spots, no nowhere it had soaked in. So that's a 10 out of 10 for that straight away. And it's a two-way zipper on this. Let's open the bottom. So if you wanted to keep this on while you're around the campfire or something, you could just pop your feet out and still walk around with the bottom open. And on this, I didn't notice at the top, I should look, we've got the poly, it's a double zipper, so we've got one on the outside and one on the inside. Let's have a look at the top. Yeah, that's a double one also. As you can see, we've got on the inside there, and we've got a pulley on the outside. So a double zipper then. You've got your military uh, badge there, so put your name, your rank in there. So if you are using this for military purposes, you know which is yours which is a good thing. There's a pocket there, with a Velcro going all the way across this one. A little bit of an overkill, but pocket's not that big. It's quite a small pocket. Put it this way, I wouldn't be able to fit my phone in there. So it's the sort of thing that you could throw a couple of batteries in there or a snack. Or if you're not using it military-wise, you can throw your keys in there. There's not one on this side. Now this is what took my fancy to buying this, was these. Let's get the one on the other side. And I'm gonna step in this now. So don't fall over. Like I said, you flew around the fire. <coughs> Let's do it this one. So you got your arms out now. So you keep cosy, nice and warm on the inside, and still whatever you want to do, cook your meal, make your coffee, or just go for a pee and not have to go out your sleeping bag and lose all the weight, which is what I really liked about it. Overall, I do like this overall. <sighs> it's all the way down. Sorry what I was saying, overall I do like this for the way it's made, the design of it. And again, show you this. Now, it's probably about 25 degrees centigrade here, so it's a bit warm to be doing this. And I can feel the heat on the inside warming up. Like I said, overall, I like this. The, the design of it is really good. For what you get, the uh, rugged, rugged, ruggedity of it, or how rugged it is, how versatile it is. How it's not just a sleeping bag for laying in bed. How the easy access with the centre zip. Oh, brilliant stuff. I like the colour. I like the material. But the two things put me off now. I've been using it for so long. It hasn't come apart. Not yet. So that's a bonus. That's a, that's a positive. But like I said at the, near the beginning of the video, it's stitching 
isn't the best. Uh, the insulation. Overall, it gives an even uh, protection. But I have, each time I've noticed it, there's a cold patch around this area. So for some reason, either the insulation was defective, wasn't the best, or they haven't uh, fitted it properly in there. But them two reasons, yeah. Now they said minus five. Now, I was in a bowl, forecast was for the local area uh, was uh, eight degrees centigrade. No, yeah, eight degrees centigrade. I was in the hammock with the under blanket. So that re that's rated to minus five and I know that does go to minus five and still keep me warm without feeling the cold. At that point, like I said before, in other videos that you get to that point where you don't feel warm but you don't feel cold but you're still comfortable that under blanket takes you to that at the minus five now i checked the thermometer during the night and we got down to i think it was three degrees centigrade and at three degrees centigrade i had to put my heavy heavy um, fleece jacket on which is rated down to something like 15 20 minus say is minus 15 minus 20 degrees centigrade I put my boots back on the hammock had a bug net so that kept the insulation in there a little bit more I was under a tarp which made it a little bit more uh, a little bit warmer so this is like I said three degrees outside and then I was under the tarp in the bug net in the hammock with a under blanket rated to uh, minus five and it does go to minus five like I said but I was freezing I was bloody cold so to be honest going by that on that one that put me off thinking oh no so I didn't use it for the rest of the winter but then when the temperatures began to warm up at 10 degrees uh, in a shelter I felt a little chilly but I didn't feel that cold cold but just that chilliness where you start to feel uncomfortable a little bit then at about 12 degrees it leveled out I was neither warm or cold I used it in a tent uh, each time I've used it on the ground out of the hammock oh, I had it on a sleep mat so my back was always warm so it was only the top that got me but in a tent that was the same it got to before I actually felt comfortably warm it was about 15 degrees centigrade which is not the best for one that's rated to minus 5 extreme you would have thought one that's rated minus 5 extreme would probably take you close to the the 2 3 degrees centigrade comfort let's say between 2 and 5 degrees centigrade for the comfort rating and then the rest would drop down to the extreme level where you start to feel cold so not a winter definitely not a winter sleeping bag uh, I couldn't recommend this to anyone to be honest if unless you want to use it in the summer when where the temperatures aren't that low but you might be getting some rain and that this, this would be great in that situation like I said between a 10 15 degrees centigrade it's depending how warm or how cold you sleep like I said, it is, the water uh, resistance on it is good. Like I said, nothing soaked up from underneath from any of the uh, the rain, the, the uh, dew or the mist or anything like that. It's just, like I said, the stitching and that patch. And it's nowhere near what it's rated at. If they're rating it for somebody who's wearing their boots, they've got their winter long johns on or thermals, then they've got their uh, heavy duty pants on top of that for the winter and then the same for your top half then maybe you would feel warm and the rating would be correct but when I look at getting a sleeping bag the whole idea of wearing a sleeping bag away using a sleeping bag is so I could take my day clothes off and just wear my base layer 
like my like my jocks and uh, a t-shirt or something like that or a thermal uh, base layer so if that's what you're looking at it for no good that's my opinion it's no good for me but like I said if you're looking at rugging yourself up putting your thermal beanies on and putting your thermals on and your heavy duty pants on and thick socks on and your boots on top of that and uh, and then the base layer, then the mid layer, then you, your winter jacket on inside the bag. You get away with it. But as it all, no. I, I can't recommend it to anyone in any situation, to be honest. It's a shame, because like I said, the style of it, the design is fantastic. They need to get that insulation sorted, that temperature rating. Either that or change it because there's no way if you went to minus five you would have to be completely rugged up. Right, I'm going to sneak this in before the end of the video because I forgot to do this at the end was show you actually going in the bag. Does it fit in? Do you have to roll it or can you stuff it in? And as you know if you've watched any of my videos before I prefer things where I can just stuff it all in, cinch it up, throw it in my pack and be gone. I'm not a person who likes to keep folding things and rolling things and getting it perfect to slide into a bag. So here we go. I've got the head bit in first. Now I've got the foot end in first. So it pushes all the air and out the open end there. in fairly easy or sleeping back countries should do the same okay. see how I've got this done that way nope that way nope I'll get it eventually <laughs> that one goes that one goes got it Give it a slight tug, hold it in place, ready to go back in the bag. Now, carry on watching the video. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas about this sleeping bag. And if it has, please go down below and click on the subscribe button. Click on the notification bell and select all so you can be notified of all future videos coming up. And also click on the like button and share it with all your mates or anybody you think would get benefit out of this video. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. So until next time, get out there, have some fun and take care.